They are all products of educational institutions or what we call schools. Schooling is known as an essential part of an individual's life program. That's why when we were five, our parents sent us to kindergarten. And if you count it, we have to stay for over 17 years of our lives under school programs. Imagine how long that is. But the question is, why do we need to go to school? Among the many reasons, generally, it is because we have to gain knowledge and skills and education needed to live successfully. But if we are to take a closer look, school doesn't only educate us, but it also makes us experience a variety of life scenarios which eventually shape us how to perceive life and also teach us how to live with it. That is exactly what sociology of education studies about. Sociology of education is a study of how schools and individual experiences influence education and its outcome. This examines everything that affects education, including educational structures, processes, and practices. To have an objective look at these factors, Sociology of Education tried to examine everything under sociological perspectives, namely functionalism, constant theory, critical theory, post-structuralism, and lastly symbolic interaction. But we'll try to overview only the three of them. In functionalism, maintaining social equilibrium is greatly valued. It views every individual as important as the other. From the word function, everyone regardless of their social status should function for the benefit of the whole body. So even though you belong to a low class family, you are important for society just because you function differently from those who belong to high class. From that example, we can see that functionalism reduces educational conflict at all costs, meaning there is no such thing as more lucky than the other. Unlike conflict theory that points out the social inequalities present in education, it gives emphasis to social partitions, primarily social class conflict, or what we know a Marxist view. It classifies two classes in the community, the oppressors and the oppressed. The oppressors are those who belong to high class or the more lucky and the oppressed are those who belong to low class these are those who are perceived in society as ill-fated individuals for example how different it is to be a poor kid student than to be a rich kid student therefore success is determined by social status unlike functionalism wherein success has no social standard. Symbolic interactionism, on the other hand, emphasizes the social interaction inside a classroom and other school-related venues that affect students' performance. These theories might differ from each other, but they are all occurring at the same time if we are to look at different angles of students' life. In my FMA 1, I studied the role of the school in the development of a student's social functions, such as socialization, social change, and modernization. Given that the school is located in a poor community, and the majority of the teachers and students admitted there belong to a low-class family, I studied how the school helped the students to socialize with different people how they fed their students about social change, have they planted provocative stunts, or they just neglected the need for it? Do they successfully transmit the spirit of craving for modernization or not? For this paper, I used functionalism and conflict theory to lens the aforementioned questions and ideas. Using observational questions, the findings said the social function were limited by social class. They are taught indirectly but in application, the students were limited by financial capital, cultural capital, and social capital. However, inside the school, these misfortunes don't bother the students nor the teachers. In fact, surprisingly, according to all the respondents, they are still motivated to do what they have to do for the society. Hence, we can infer that they were driven with a functionalist perspective to be contented with what they have and to do what they can. This study has a connection to Bari education, 
that this course allows me to explore. Other than that, here's a list of social issues that woke my social consciousness about the educational system of our country. For my FMA2, I focused on analyzing the issue of education versus schooling using conflict theory. I use the concept of banking education, correspondence theory, and the habitus. I learned that there is really an invisible cage inside the school institutions that limits students' development, molding them only to how the educational system tells them. Aside from being limited, they are also tortured with the language policy. So, for a misfortunate individual, he can focus more on studying, but he is distracted by comprehension of the language. For me, this issue about language in our education is an elephant inside a classroom. Big problem, but still neglected. At the end of the paper, I recommend the following reforms. First, set a higher standard for educators. This is to make sure that the knowledge being transmitted is quality for every student. Next one, redesigning of an educational system that is learner-centered. This is to specifically cater the need of the student inside each classroom. And lastly, to use the vernacular language or the first language of a student in teaching subjects at school. So that student's attention will be directed to analyzing concepts at school and not in understanding the language being used. Overall, this course taught me to take into account every single factor that affects the educational experience of an individual. This allows me to think critically about the relationship of education to other aspects of the social system, particularly kinship, social stratification, political organization knowledge, and attitudes to knowledge. As an aspiring architect, I would be able to apply these lessons as an inspirational concept in designing educational establishments, knowing that a venue has something to do with an individual's school experience in learning. And for me, providing a student-friendly design that makes their learning more memorable and exciting is a great honor, for it is the knowledge that they can experience there that is what we value the most.